All right. Um, this is Richard Whitvoat. He was born on April 6, 1946. He served in Vietnam in the Air Force. His highest rank achieved was Sergeant. This recording is taking place in Caledonia, Michigan. My name is Eden Whitvoat, and this is my grandpa. This interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress. So, where and when were you born? Uh, I was born in Oakland, Oakland, California, April 6, 1946. Uh, what was your parent? What were your parents like and your family growing up? Um, my parents were good. They were. Uh, <laughs> my sister was a wrecking ball, but uh, <laughs> my my mother and dad were fine. Uh, I worked with my dad for many many years in the sign business, uh, uh, and. Um, I had a very active life. I paid, played basketball, football, and baseball. Went to school at Kellogg'sville High School. Was captain of the basketball team. Graduated. Uh, were you doing anything else before entering the service? Or is that about? Uh, yeah, I worked. My dad had uh, had me work with him. And I think I started when I was very young, sweeping the floors. <laughs> uh, I know my grandfather gave me my first check when I was five years old for two dollars and I uh, swept the floors for three days and uh, my dad asked me how much I got and I told him it was two dollars and he gave me another two dollars out of his pocket because he knew that wasn't enough. <laughs> uh, did you have other family members who served in the military? I did. Uh, my grandfather was in World War I. He had three sons. Uh, all three went in the Navy. Uh, my Uncle Bill was on a destroyer. My dad was on a, a an aircraft carrier, and my Uncle Skip was on an aircraft carrier. And uh, he lost he, was, he, he lost his life during the Korean era on an aircraft carrier when the catapult blew up. I was five years old. Oh, really? Um. How did you enter the service draft or enlistment? I was enlisted. Um, back then, you could get drafted fairly easily, and I found out that I had about a week before I was going to get drafted. Uh, so me and my friend Bill Tannis decided we were going to enlist so that we didn't have to go in the Army. And why did you choose the Air Force? I didn't want to come home in a body bag. <laughs> I thought that was, uh, uh, Uncle Sam would take care of his airplanes, I think, a lot better than he'd take care of his, his people that are in the jungle, because you never know what's going to happen in the jungle. Yeah. So we knew we were going to work what Air Force Base we were going to be on, and, uh, you know, that was just the way it went. So tell me about your departure for training camp and your early days of training. Uh, it was about what I thought it was going to be. It was pretty regimented. Um, did a lot of marching, washed a lot of dishes, had to fold your clothes and put them in a, in a locker and, and they threw them out and we put them back in. It was, you know, it was pretty stupid really. <laughs> but, 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 you know, we did it because, you know, we had to get out of there, of course, so that's what we did. Uh, basic training was not so difficult at all. Matter of fact, uh, we were supposed to go on uh, uh, the, um, the range that uh, for physical therapy, and it rained that day, so we couldn't go. But the Boy Scouts went that day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you have any specialized training? I was trained on some on B-52s, which is a SAC airplane. I was uh, trained on C-47s, which uh, they call in Vietnam, Puff the Magic Dragon. I was, uh, I was on uh, A-1E aircraft in Vietnam and C-124s in Utah. Um, so you were kind of talking about this, but where did you serve? I served in, uh, my first assignment was in Osco to Michigan at Wirt Smith Air Force Base. 
And from there, I went to, right straight to Vietnam and Thailand. Vietnam, and then I, my, uh, uh, my whole team went to Thailand, so then I went to Thailand to finish off that. And then we flew back and forth from uh, Thailand to Vietnam every month so we could get our combat pay, which was $65 at the time. <laughs> Um, did you witness any action or anything during battles? Yeah, I, I was in uh, Benoit one time, Benoit, Vietnam one time, putting injection seats in the airplanes, and um, we heard uh, the missiles coming in, and uh, we ran out of our barracks, and I was the last one out, and jumped into, a, into the bunker, and it hit the barracks and it blew the heck out of it. And then uh, another time I was, uh, I was supposed to go, when I was in Benoit, I was supposed to go to, uh, uh, back to Udorn, Thailand. And the pilot came in and asked me if I wanted a ride there. And I said, no, because I was going to go to Bangkok for three days. And um, he got shot down and he, had to, and he, he parachuted out. And I wouldn't have had a parachute. <laughs> I'd have had to grab a hold of him to get down. But anyway. Uh, that and when I got to Udorn, uh, we had an airplane on the end of the runway shoot about eight rockets off and, and killed a number of people. That's all. Um, do you have any other significant stories from your time abroad? Um, no, that's, that's about the most significant stories that I had. Yeah. Uh, how did you stay in touch with family and friends back home? Um, when I was married to your dad's mother, I think two or three of them, my friends from uh, Utah and a couple of, and Vietnam also, I was with a lot of those people there then, uh, stood up in my wedding, in, in uh, my church wedding over at, uh, um, where did I have that at, um, where I go to church now at? St. Paul's United Methodist Church. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but after that, I, I have no, I, I haven't seen him or talked to him or anything. Yeah. Um. Did you like? What did you do for recreation or off-duty pursuits? Uh. Played a lot of basketball. Played uh, or played table tennis a lot. Uh, played a lot of um, uh, uh, cards, you know. Yeah. Cribbage mostly. <laughs> Dirty arts. <laughs> uh, where were you when the war ended? They sent me back to. They sent me to Utah when the war ended, and it, st it stayed on until 1979. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, it stayed on, the war was, took a long time to get over with. Mm -hmm. But I left, I left uh, Hill Air Force Base in Utah in 1969, I was discharged. Um, how did you return home? Um, airplane. Uh, from which, from where? Um, from Utah. Oh, uh, from Utah? Place. Uh, no, I, I drove. I drove back home. Um, and how was it coming back home to your family and community? After the war? Yeah. I landed in San Francisco, and there was a lot of protesters. Yeah. And they, uh, they were calling us baby killers and spitting on us. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice, nice people. <laughs> Um, how was readjustment to civilian life? Wonderful. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> um, have you had contact with fellow veterans over the years or membership in veterans organizations? Uh, I'm a member of the American Legion, Carl A. Johnson Post, number two. Um, been a member of that for 48, 49 years now. Um, so, my dad was a, a, a commander of, of post number two for a long time, and then I was 
about four years later, I was the commander of the same post. And um, like any organization, they work you to death. Yeah. And so I, I dropped out. Of, I didn't drop out. I'm still a member, but I, I'm not an active member. Um, how did wartime experiences affect your life? Um, life is very precious. And um, I think when you been in a war of some of any kind, you realize that you're going to lose some people that you know. Now we had a, a magazine called Stars and Stripes, and we got it every week. And the first thing we did with it, we turned to the page where Michigan was to see if it recognized anybody that died, because that's what that's where they was. And the year I was there. We had six people that died that I knew from Kellogg'sville High School, which has a, uh, 113 people in the graduation class. They didn't all move from that class, but we yeah. lost six people. Um, do you have any other life lessons learned from military service? Uh, don't volunteer. <laughs> is, is <laughs> for anything. <laughs> Um, don't smoke in basic training because if you do and you don't put it out, pro put the cigarette out properly and field strip it, you'll end up burying it six feet down. And then if you don't know what exactly what cigarette kind of cigarette you smoked, you got to dig it back up, and <laughs> that's not fun. Um, any final words or things to add? Um, this interview will bring back a lot of memories. I can say that. Um, I know one thing, I, and a lot of, some people I do know go back to Vietnam. I, when I came back to the States, I put the shade down on the airplane and I never looked back. And I never plan on going back. I just never, I never will go back. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, dear. <laughs> All right. Okay.